Now let's take it further and try to define different types of sets. Okay, the the first in line is is a trivial set that is called the empty set. Okay, the the empty set. Now, if you define the characteristic of the set by the set builder form in such a manner that somehow no element belongs to the set, that set is called an empty set. It may so happen, right? It may so happen that what you are trying to hint at is an impossibility, right? So, so let us try to, to take an example. Let, let's try to take a set, say, say A is the set of all X such that X is a student of, of class 11, class 11 of, of school school say whatever okay school any arbitrary school abc right now if you if you go to that school and ask for the class 11th and since nothing much is defined maybe you take into account all the art students all the science students you will have a set that may comprise of certain number of students right so starting from maybe rajesh and okay and ashok and okay and maybe gita and whatever okay you can list them fine that's possible now suddenly if you if you come up with a different set saying a is the set of all x such that x is a student student of class 10 as well as class 11 in school ABC in the same school okay a, a student who is a student of, of class 10 as well as class 11 right now that does not happen fine in the present educational scenario that simply does not happen that a student is studying in both the classes right so this becomes an empty set whatever you do you will not be able to find any student here you will not be able to write anything here okay so so that is what is an empty set okay so an empty set is a set Let, let's try to write the definition okay the definition is a is a trivial one that that a, a set that contains no element is called an empty set it's called an empty set okay an empty set or uh, uh, null set or a void set right uh, a void set correct fine now there is a definite definite way of of defining of, of symbolizing it right so so it is represented by it is represented by by either this okay simply this without any braces whatsoever right no braces do not commit that mistake okay there will be no braces so so I'm, I, I'll, I'll erase that so either this or if you if you if you if you do put the braces 
you do not have to write anything because you do not have anything to write within, right? That's really logical. So either this or this, but never ever try to put braces on this because that will mean something, quite something else, fine? And we come to that. So, so it is either represented by this or this. Get the point? Fine. Now we come to, to an extension of this very thing that is called a finite and infinite sets, right? A finite, finite and infinite sets, right? Infinite sets. Okay, and, and as the name suggests, a set that has either no elements or has a finite number of elements will be called a finite set, right? A set which is empty, which is empty. or has a finite number of elements finite number of elements is called a finite set is called a finite set okay a set which is not finite will be an infinite set right so a set which is not a finite set which is not a finite set is called is called an infinite set infinite right infinite set Okay. Now, now let us let's try to to see an example. If A is the set of all X such that X is X such that x represents all the residents, all the human residents, right? Human residents of, say, a city, city, again I name it, say, A, B, C, any random city, fine? Then that is a finite set. Now, if you, if you say that n is the set of all x such that x is a a natural number, a natural number, this becomes an infinite set, right? There is no limit to it. You cannot cut it off at a point and say these are the only natural numbers. You'll have to keep on writing, and it will be a never-ending process. Similarly, all the set of whole numbers, x such that x is a, a whole number, right? That is also an infinite set, right? All the, all the, all the, all the sets t such that x such that x is an irrational number, is an irrational number. It's an irrational number, right? Correct? So these are infinite sets. And we have seen that the best way to represent an infinite set is either the set builder form or the interval form if, if you are trying to represent the numbers, right? The, the 
the numbers but but set builder form actually includes the interval form so so that is the best suited to at least represent the infinite sets or even the finite sets which have a huge number of elements right and you're not willing to write them they are indicative fine so 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 that is with with the finite and infinite sets now let us come to comparing two sets right let us come to the concept called called the equal sets the equal sets right equal sets the two sets a and b let, let's let's begin with the definition two sets a and b two sets a and b are said to be equal are said to be equal if they have exactly the same elements the same elements okay i'm not saying the same number of elements right they have the exactly same elements right and whenever that happens when this happens we say that a is equal to b in a in the similar manner in a similar manner in which we say that two numbers are equal we say that two sets are equal okay if two sets are not equal if two sets are not equal okay they are said to be unequal said to be unequal okay unequal and represented as as a is not equal to b get the point a is not equal to b fine now suppose i have a set a which is 1 2 3 4 okay and there is another set b which is represented as the set of all x such that x belongs to the set of natural numbers and and x is less than equal to 4 right this set is given in the roster form this set is given in the set builder form but if you try to convert this into the set builder into the roster or this into the set builder you you find that b in the set builder format is nothing but the same thing right right so a is indeed equal to b right a is indeed equal to b now there is a property of the set that that we have studied earlier so so there is a set this that's already written so i i won't repeat it okay let me write another set say c c is a set which is represented like this you find that the order of this set is does not match the order of the set a but we have said at the outset that the order in which the elements are written does not make it a different set correct it is the same set 
so even when you see the elements not in the same order these two sets are equal correct they are equal fine let us come to another set say i have i have this as my set now just a, just a cursory comparison between a and d tells you that that the number of elements here are not the same okay but but if you see and and and, and kind of remember and try to recall a property that we had earlier stated that repetition is default right so you have two four so you write it as one four you have two one so you write it as one oh, one and and one two so you just write like that and one three so this that that initially looked to be not equal to a or c is actually equal to both these sets right so you should also be aware of that so in this case a is indeed equal to d and so is c so c is also equal to d so the order and repetition should be marked after after having filtered the elements of the set through the repetition and the order if you find that they are exactly the same elements then they'll be said to be equal right let's try to see another set say say something that is like this now this set if you try to compare with this they do not have the same elements right one three four two one two four three four they are there but then there is an extra element here now that makes these two sets unequal and you will write that a is not equal to e correct do we get the point fine you should also be careful that the sets might not be both given in the same format right they might be given in two different formats and you will have to convert it into one of them for the comparison to be justified and and for you to have clarity whether they are equal fine 